The first ever G20 finance and labor ministers meeting was recently held in Moscow. First and foremost, Russia and the world's future prospects were discussed. Global economic conditions uh, remain challenging. Uh, weak is, uh, growth is too weak, employment is too high, and recovery is too fragile. Boosting growth and jobs is now the short-term priority for the global economy. It was agreed by the G20 ministers. Tackling unemployment was considered even more urgent than deficit reduction. We yes, budgetary consolidation, reduction of deficit if you prefer, is a priority in the medium term. It's necessary to reduce debt. An economy that accumulates debt is an economy that becomes poorer. But the short-term priority, the one that we must act on, is growth and job creation. Another topic on the agenda was greater tax transparency of multinational companies. The Secretary General of OECD and Helguria presented the organization's plan to close loopholes that allow corporations to avoid paying billions of dollars in taxes. Receipts to the government, investment in social policies, easing job creation will be among the highlights at the G20 Leaders Summit hosted by President Vladimir Putin in September. The summit will hopefully be marked by seeing Russia dealing with accelerated growth issues. The Ministry of Economic Development anticipates the economy will be fueled by investment and so will expand more rapidly in the next two quarters. According to Russia's Federal Service of State Statistics, Russia's economy grew by 1.9 percent in the second quarter of the year. This is an improvement from the 1.6 percent growth it posted in the first quarter, but still well below the best-case scenario of 3 percent. Despite the slowdown, Russia and other BRICS countries continue to drive the world economy. In a recent survey, the World Bank revealed that Russia has overtaken Germany as the fifth largest economy in terms of purchasing power parity, and Russia's BRICS peer China is in second place. Nonetheless, global economy impacts the emerging world and its prospects. What's happened in the last five to ten years, there's been a huge investment in new supply of energy, new supply of commodities. And what we've had at the moment is, it's not China's slowdown is the problem, I think it's Europe's it's collapse, there's zero percent growth in Europe. They're not buying anything, they're not buying cars, they're not driving around as much. And as a consequence, China's slowing, yes, but, but Europe's just stopped. And at the same time, there's been more supply of new energy coming out of Kazakhstan, more oil, more oil out of Azerbaijan, uh, more oil out of Iraq. Um, Libya's turned back on again. And, and, and also you've had new iron ore mines, new copper mines, new aluminium smelters. And all of this together means there's more supply. At the same time, as demand has weakened because of Europe. And that's what's hurt Russia, I think, in the last year or two. Hopefully, Russia will play its cards well, and its presidency in the G20 will bring results benefiting itself and the world economy. Lisa Lucan, On The Money, RT.